Do you want to make a difference in the world? And see the lives of the people of India and all internationals transformed with the gospel? As India goes, all Asia will go with Living the Dream podcast provides tools for you to pray, give, and go as you become an active participant in the Great Commission and help your church's demographic represent the demographic of your community. Get ready to find your strategy for reaching your community and changing the world here at Living the Dream Podcast with your host, Pastor Kevin. Good morning. I'm Pastor Kevin, founder and executive director of Global Hope India and your host for Living the Dream Podcast. This is where the church gathers to mobilize in order to effectively reach the community and change the world, including all the foreign-born internationals moving into our communities. I interview today's top church leaders from around the world so we can learn all we can about reaching internationals with the gospel and partnering with them in the Great Commission. It's time the church has this conversation. Go to globalhopeindia.org forward slash resources for tools for your success. Now let's jump into today's show. It gives me a high honor to introduce to you my friend, David Apuku. He is a native of Ghana. He and his beautiful wife have five lovely children. David holds a master's in business administration from UNC Chapel Hill. He attends Elevation Church, the Mooresville campus. He works at Echodis as the marketing and business development manager. He is known for his million dollar smile and his favorite saying, it is well. When you meet him, you want to make sure you ask him about the pet lion he had as a kid. David, welcome to Living the Dream podcast. Last week on Living the Dream. Grew up in a part of Ghana called Takradi. It was, it's a harbor city. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in in any harbor city, you know what happens over there, right? So I grew up in a a neighborhood, which I don't think I can compare that to any place I've seen in the U.S. You Mm -hmm. know, very underprivileged. We live in government houses. I I grew up in a single family home. My mom... And I had all the three siblings. I was the youngest. And most of the people in our neighborhood were prostitutes, gamblers. You know, that's, mm-hmm. our neighborhood was where people hang out at night. You know, people usually wake up around like 6 p.m. and hang out all the way to morning, about 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. Drinking, smoking, drugs, alcohol, everything that you can know. You know, mm-hmm. so I grew up in that neighborhood. And, you know, even though... I grew up in Methodist. We used to go to church. Okay. But I was not a Christian. I need to do more. So that is where I took the step. You know, I took a step away from work mm-hmm. and decided that I'm going to be a missionary in mm-hmm. Ghana. Okay. Man, I let, uh, listen, nothing could have taken me back to Ghana like that, oh. except for the gospel. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, with the kind of money I was making here, mm-hmm. I had I finally arrived. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, finally arrived. Six figures, work mm-hmm. about eight minutes away from home. I mm-hmm. can work home, from home sometimes. Yeah, but I stepped away mm-hmm. after you know praying, and then I decided that now I'm going to be a missionary. So I embarked on a mission um, mm-hmm. in Ghana mm-hmm. from 20, and I did that from 2016. Mm-hmm. All the way to last year, I came back in May last year. You know, okay. so I would spend most of the time in Ghana, okay. and all I did is travel to school, school after school. Mm. So, so uh, on uh, on any given Sunday, mm-hmm. I meet about five thousand students. Wow! Yeah, wow. I would travel to about two or three schools mm-hmm. on any given Sunday. You yeah. know, and share the gospel, and we'll see thousands of people give their life. Yeah. To so I did some quick math, and in, in that first week uh yeah. that you went back on spring break yeah. um a thousand at least a thousand hands went up people committing their lives to christ over the years you you have any firm stats oh man <laughs> so in in 2000 from from june 2016 till december mm-hmm. right yeah god had used me to lead twenty two thousand people wow to christ one man comes from ghana to the USA, yeah. takes Jesus only, uh, hears the gospel, takes Jesus only, and now 22,000 people yeah. in Ghana call 
Jesus Lord. Amen. Out of Amen. out of your testimony. Amen. And Hallelujah. Uh, oh man. <laughs> I mean, w- one of them that I remember the most mm-hmm. was that I went to this Catholic school. And God is amazing, man. Mm. God loves his children. Yes. And God loves people to hear the gospel. Yeah. If anybody's listening to it, this they know a lot. I mean, I have nothing against the Catholics. Uh-huh. But if you are not a Catholic priest, uh-huh. you are not allowed to mm. preach mm-hmm. in your churches. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But here was I. Mm-hmm. Went to a Catholic school, one of the most prominent Catholic schools in, mm-hmm. in, in Ghana called yeah. Holy Child. Anybody listen to this wouldn't attest to that. Mm-hmm. A very, it's a girls' school, so they're very guarded. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So when I spoke to the, the Catholic priest there that, oh, this is what I'm doing, and I would love to come and share with them. Man, I didn't even want to go because I knew the answer was going to be no, but uh-huh. God made a way. Wow. The, Catholic, the, the priest was like, if you are available next weekend, I want you to come in. Okay. I showed up, you know, Uh showed up all girls and in the, in the Catholic church, Mm -hmm. in a Catholic school Mm -hmm. and non-Catholic guy who is not even a priest. Uh And he, he did that. He had no referral from anybody. Uh Did not know what kind of message or doctrine that I have. Right. But God made a way. I know that God made a way. Mm -hmm. I shared the gospel in that church Mm -hmm. and I would say bow. 98% of the students stood up to give their life to Christ. Wow. Praise God. And I have videos of that, Uh you know. And I remember one girl after the the service came to me and told me that, listen, I've been going to church for years and Mm -hmm. I did not even know Mm. that you have to give your life to Christ. Right. And that was the situation with most of them who were in school. Yeah. You know. So, you know, I mean, I've seen, uh, listen, anybody out there, don't underestimate yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The word is in you. Yeah. And it's not you that win the soul. Mm -hmm. One thing I know is the Holy Spirit that does the work. Mm -hmm. You know, Bible says, except my father calls you, you cannot come. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's one thing I know that um, I stand there and I I don't even call myself a Bible scholar. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I just shared the gospel with my testimony like Paul did. You know, yeah, yeah where I was, how I became a, a born again and mm-hmm. what God has done. That's yeah. my, my story mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. And then most people will give the man, let me give you one that I know that I was in Ghana driving, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And here um, at a stoplight. And in Ghana, most people try to sell you stuff by the roadside, right. you know. Mm-hmm. So there was this guy who approached me to sell something to me, mm-hmm. and the light it was on a red light, mm-hmm. and I told I started telling him about Christ, mm-hmm. and between that red light and the green light, mm-hmm. the guy was ready to give his life to Christ. Wow! I don't know how many minutes it takes for a red light to turn yes. to green light, uh-huh. so I had to pull over to the other end for him to give his life to Christ. <laughs> I said, man, Praise God, God. You yeah. know, he's amazing. He's uh-huh. amazing. Yeah. So, you know, and from 2016 till 2019, mm-hmm. I can boldly say mm-hmm. that God has used me yeah. to lead over 60,000 mm-hmm. young people yeah. to Christ yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. You know, there's a big challenge, though. Mm-hmm. Those numbers are big, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And one thing that God is impressing on my heart is discipleship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, right? There are too many of them who come to Christ, mm-hmm. but not enough people to help disciple these people. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So that becomes a big burden. Yeah, that is what when I left Ghana in May last year, that is the burden that I came here with. Yeah, and I came here praying, seeking God that He will make a way, give me a plan, give me the people, give mm-hmm. me the resources, mm-hmm. so that this can be done effectively. Yeah. Because I realized that winning the souls or people saying yes to the gospel mm-hmm. is the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but we, the Bible say, we have to make disciples, yes. mm-hmm. and that is very challenging. That is the hardest part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, brother! Thank you so much for yeah. sharing that. And I just. I'm I'm convicted for Americans in that so often we take the sal- salvation we've been given for granted. 
and I'm I'm blessed by your witness of how uh, the Holy Spirit brought a fire into you, <laughs> a fire that you cannot stop, that yes. you cannot be quiet about, and is now taking you back to Ghana. And there's 60,000 people that have uh, called upon the name of the Lord Jesus for salvation. You know, growing up here in the Bible Belt, we have seen altar calls over and over and over. Give your life to Christ. Trust him for salvation. The invitation to to really submit and surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And we just take that for granted that that's the message everyone around the world has heard. But you'd be uh, shocked and amazed at how many people are associated with Christianity and even honoring the Bible and honoring figures of the Bible like Mary and mm-hmm. different, you know, different heroes of, of the faith, the apostles and, and different ones, but never really given the opportunity to know the Lord Jesus as Savior, know the Lord Jesus as Lord and commit their lives to Christ and, and to understand a born again relationship with the Lord Jesus. And you were given that and it became so precious to you. You can't shut up over it. You can't uh, you, you can't just live the American dream. You you came pursuing the American dream, but you're not satisfied with the American dream. It's like the the measurement of your success now is your purpose that God's given you and you being an ambassador for Christ yes. to the people of Ghana. Amen. And, and not just for salvation, but now for discipleship. For discipleship. Discipleship. Yeah. In 2016, when you know, when I was about to go back to Ghana and then back on this trip, you know, the missions full time. It's like you said, the fire, right? Mm-hmm. I could not sit still. Mm-hmm. Like I was at work, mm-hmm. working as a consultant, but every now I'm going on uh, online mm-hmm. and I'm looking. How do missions survive? Mm-hmm. How do missionaries live their life? Like I'm checking out everything to mm-hmm. the point I could not sit still. And then mm-hmm. I decided that no, mm-hmm. I have to give up this and go. Mm-hmm. You know, to the point I did not even have the resources. You know, I was part of a church that, you know, did not really buy into the vision. Mm-hmm. You know, man, I had to take my 401k and I was like, I can care less. The soul mm-hmm. of a person is more important. Yeah. What's a 401k if mm-hmm. the person is going to perish in hell? Yeah. You know, and like you said, people take take it for granted, thinking that everybody is hearing that message. Mm-hmm. There are numerous of people that I've met in Ghana who go mm-hmm. to church. Mm-hmm. And when I share the gospel with them, mm-hmm. they ask me, how did you know all that? I'm like, this is in the Bible. Yeah. And how come we haven't heard about it? Mm-hmm. Because most preachers are preaching, you know, they preach messages of faith. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. they preach healing mm-hmm. but then because they are preaching to the needs of the people mm-hmm. they see okay get faith and then you will have that mm-hmm. have faith and you receive your healing but you can be healed mm-hmm. and go to hell yeah you can have faith all you want mm-hmm. and still go to hell if you are not a born again right and most people ha- don't have that opportunity they haven't the heard the bible that. teaches even yes. the demons yeah. know the lord jesus they do know yes. about him that's right yeah that, we can know all about him exactly. and never experience him <laughs> yes and end up in a christless eternity that's right and you know we are so blessed even right here we're recording this in Cary, north carolina we are under the status under the shadows of so many steeples of of incredible ministry, J.D. Greer at Summit Church, Stephen Furtick at Elevation Church, Mike Lee at Hope Community Church. The the list goes on and on and on of incredible men of God and churches that are really being true to inviting people to a born-again relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I grieve, as you do for Ghana, I grieve in the same way for India. Now, there's incredible churches there and incredible witnesses for Christ there, but the church in general is very weak there in in providing the truth of of a born-again experience with the Lord Jesus and and an infilling of the Holy Spirit and the the fire of Almighty God dwelling within to, to change a person from being absent to the gospel to being an ambassador for the gospel. Yes. And so, you know, many times I've sat here in North Carolina and grieved how will how will they know? 
how how will the church become that New Testament church that we see in the Bible? And I'm meaning the big C church in India. Again, I'm you know there's there are very real expressions of the gospel occurring in India as well as in Ghana, but but per capita there's not the the same opportunity as we've been given in the in the USA. And so we we take that verse, I, I feel like this is my confession for Americans. You know, we hear that verse, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Yes. And so we take Jesus and we're like, okay, we're not going to lose our soul now, so it's okay for me to gain the whole world. Absolutely not. What is the cost of a soul that does not yet know the Lord Jesus? Amen. And here we are accumulating all this wealth. We're buying more and more storage units, renting more storage units to put more stuff in. And yet there are people in India and Ghana and all around the world that have no opportunity to know the Lord Jesus yet. And so how can we be sitting here as Christians and saying, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Okay, now I'm not going to lose my soul, so let me just gain the whole world and let everyone else lose their soul. That's not the gospel. So you, you made a very good point, and this is something that I thought about too. So when I was in Ghana, on one, I remember on one given Sunday, I preached at three different schools, right? Mm -hmm. Some schools have early church service. Some have midday service and some have evening service. Mm -hmm. So I usually try to schedule around, right, mm -hmm. to have all this so I can do this all in a day. Yeah. I want to maximize my time sure. while I'm over there, right? And, you know, I would go to one school. Let's say one school will be in Cary and the next school will be in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But I have four hours, you know, to get there. So right after this, I drive over there. And then from Atlanta, I will probably go to like Nashville mm -hmm. to go to the third school in the evening, right? But I was when I was doing all that, and I would do the math, right? My gas it will cost me not more than let's say let's say fifty dollars, okay, okay, mm -hmm. to drive all this journey in a day, okay. And so I look at it, and and how can I compare fifty dollars? Mm -hmm. To the thousands of people who are going to be saying yes to the gospel today. Mm -hmm. And even if it costs me $10,000, yeah. can that mm -hmm. be equivalent to the soul of a person? Right. Jesus said, I will leave the 99 and go after that one yes. that is lost. Yeah. So, like you said, we sit here and people just, I have, I have people that do that too. They accumulate money and buy investment and do this and I want to have more of that. Mm -hmm. But they have never sown into the gospel. Yeah. They have, one, have not shared in the gospel mm -hmm. with anybody yeah. and neither have they even given towards any missions. Listen, mm -hmm. if you can go, send yeah. somebody. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's uh, Romans 10, um, it's in Romans 10, 14, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It says, how are they going to believe unless yeah. they hear it? Yeah. How are they going to hear it unless somebody preaches it? Yeah. How are they going, how is somebody going to preach it unless they are sent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so send somebody mm -hmm. so that the people can hear the gospel. It's right. not, man, you, even if it costs you a thousand dollars a month, Mm -hmm. For one soul to be won, it is worth it. Yeah. Because guess what? Jesus, mm -hmm. right? When he was leaving his throne above to come on earth. Yeah. And this is a revelation that I have. Even if he was coming for just one person, mm -hmm. he would still have come and died the same way. Yeah. He wouldn't have said, okay, it's one person, so just take a drop of blood and then everybody is saved. No. Yeah. He would have gone to the cross the same way because the soul of a person is more important to God than anything. Yeah. That's why it says, you, I mean, you gain the whole world. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at all the riches in America, mm -hmm. all the riches in the Middle East, mm -hmm. all the riches all over the world. If they give it to you mm -hmm. and they say, take this and go to hell, mm -hmm. I don't think you would do that. Right. Mm -hmm. man, God forbid. But man, eh, I mean, we the Christians in America, we need to wake up. Yeah. We need mm -hmm. to wake up and... One thing that I have realized, and I learned this in business school, right? There's not no better person mm -hmm. to send to their kind mm -hmm. than the person who has some kind of similarity right. with the people over yeah. there. Yeah. You know, there's a saying that similarity breeds attraction. Mm -hmm. One. Mm 
Yeah. And Paul said that in the Bible, right? He says, to the weak, mm -hmm. I become weak. Yeah. All he's trying to say is, to the poor, I become poor. Yes. He's trying to be like them, kind yeah. of find a common ground so that he can share the gospel. He said, by so doing, I will win some over. Mm -hmm. The best missionary, okay, mm -hmm. to take the gospel is the person who is familiar mm -hmm. with the people, one, yeah. and the people can also relate to them. It doesn't mean other people can't do it. Mm -hmm. Bunky has done it in mm -hmm. Africa, right. right? But I would say the best mm -hmm. because companies, Walmart went to, and I'm, I'm, and I'm just coming to business a little bit, mm -hmm. Walmart went to Germany mm -hmm. to set up Walmart yeah. and did not succeed. Right. You know why? Mm -hmm. They went the American way yeah. and did not work. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Germans don't want cheap stuff. Right. Germans don't want somebody standing at the front of the store. When everybody can, hi, welcome to Walmart. They hated that. Uh -huh. So because of that, it did not work mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm -hmm. they, made, they missed the point. Mm -hmm. That case study, when we did that, the moral of the story was they should have involved more of the locals yeah. mm -hmm. to get it across. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it is very paramount for Christians here. If you see a foreigner, mm -hmm. that is a missionary right in front of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that person, An you, one, you can share gospel with them if they are not born again. That is one. Yes. And Start once there. they receive the gospel, yeah. lo and behold, mm -hmm. when they go back, yeah. people perceive them as they got it all made together. And now, a story from the mission field. So I have a story about the prescription drug Ambien in India being used there. Our foreigners many times will take uh, prescriptions. Obviously, they're, they're, they're necessary prescriptions over to India. And sometimes that prescription happens to be for the sleep uh, sedative Ambien. Uh, one of our teams at a train station in Hyderabad, and they were waiting for a train to go out to another area of ministry. The schedule in India is not like the schedule in the USA. The train scheduled to leave at midnight to not even show up to 1230. And so one of the passengers uh, from the USA decided that in order to sleep well on the train, she would take an Ambien. And there was a medical doctor there that had given her this Ambien before uh, they actually went out to the train station. But she was thinking the train will come, and so going ahead and taking the Ambien now would be a good idea, but the train did not come. So taking the Ambien became a horrible idea because she is forced to stay awake longer than her mind and her body wants her to stay awake. And so at one point, she actually begins flirting with our host pastor, <laughs> and she puts her fingers <laughs> under her chin and waves at him in a, in a very silly way. And our host pastor began scolding the medical doctor of why are you giving her these drugs because they haven't seen this kind of behavior as a result of, of taking a pill unless it is to get high. It was just a very funny round of laughter. Uh, the train did come. She was able to lay flat and get a good night's sleep. The Ambien eventually did help, but for that moment, um, it, there was a lot of laughter there on the train depot there on the bench. We want to give some local love to Mark Martek at Power Secure Inc. here in North Carolina. Power Secure is a leading provider of energy solutions in distributed generation, energy storage, renewables, and energy efficiency. In addition to grants and charitable donations, Mark is an incredible witness for Christ and international missions. He and his wife, Patty, are founding members of the Hope for Haiti Foundation and the annual Rock Your World charity concert. Through their generosity, they have not only provided electricity locally, but have brought energy solutions across the globe. Mark, we salute you for your generosity. Check out their website at powersecure.com. Want tools to help increase the effectiveness of your church's efforts to reach the internationals in your community? Global Hope India has 20 years experience and can empower you to live the dream like we see in Revelation chapter 7 of every nation, tribe, and tongue worshiping Christ. Check out our resources like this podcast and other resources at globalhopeindia.org. Reach out today. Know your numbers. Maybe you've seen the show Shark Tank. 
and you've seen the business owners come in to pitch to the sharks and explain why they're the right person to execute the vision for their business. Well, we believe that you are the right person to execute the vision for your church, and you need to know your numbers. According to recent research, between 2015 and the year 2060, the world's population is expected to increase by 32%. Right now, 7.3 billion call Earth home, and in 2060, it is projected that 9.6 billion will be inhabiting planet Earth. Over that same period, the number of Muslims, the major religious group within the youngest population having the highest fertility, is projected to increase by 70%. The number of Christians is projected to rise by 34%, slightly slower than the global population overall. So we have our work cut out for us to invest wisely in the advancement of the gospel. So when I'm in Ghana, people see me as I got it all together. Mm -hmm. I got it made. I'm I'm living in America. Mm -hmm. And so they expect me to be like what they see in the movies and everything, right? Right. I'm Mm -hmm. coming in blasting some kind of gangster rap music Mm -hmm. and that's the perception they have. But then I hit them with the gospel. Yeah. And they're surprised Mm -hmm. that you live in America and you're talking about Christ. I'm Mm -hmm. like, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they think that once you got it made, this is a perception of um, people in Ghana, I would say not not everybody. Mm -hmm. When I say this, I don't generalize everybody. Mm -hmm. But People think that once you got it made, you don't need Christ. Mm-hmm. This people serve Christ or go to church out of the need that mm-hmm. they are looking for. Mm-hmm. They are looking for something, so I'm coming to God so that mm-hmm. He will do that for me. And once I get it, He's not going to see me again. Mm-hmm. But by God's grace, mm-hmm. you know, we've known that that is not the case. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We need to know his ways, not his just his deeds, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. his ways. Yeah. Yeah. Know him more, have a relationship with him. Yeah. You know, that yeah. is man. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I want to end with just a positive call and that that's a call to generosity. Yes. Uh, I really believe God is bringing forth a movement on the earth of generosity for too long. We have as an Americans, again, I'll, I'll confess here, even in my own life, we, we see John three sixteen for God so loved that he gave. And so we receive, but then we stop giving mm-hmm. and that's called greed. Yeah. And so we flip God's grace and his generosity to us into greed and materialism. And we start piling up instead of start channeling. And he told Abraham, you've been blessed to be a blessing. The proper response to the gospel and to grace is generosity. And, and what you've testified to is living a generous life. You could have been here storing up stuff in storage units around North Carolina and Atlanta and wherever you have been, but you are taking the, the fulfillment of the American dream and a six figure income you share, and you, you leave that and go to Ghana for the gospel. And, and that's generosity. You're taking more courage and you're receiving more, more of the presence of God. You are obeying the grace that you've been given, the generosity that you've been shown by, by responding in, in generosity. If we want to see Ghana come to Christ, let's sow into your ministry. You want to see Indian nationals know Christ, sow into Global Hope India. We we have a responsibility and an opportunity in front of us to to respond as as we have been shown love and grace to to respond in that same way. As we as we close out the episode, what what encouragement do you have to our brothers and sisters in Christ? So one thing I want to say to that generosity part is it is very important. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have to establish that a soul is a soul regardless of their location, the Mm -hmm. color, or creed. Amen. When it comes to God, it does not matter. Right. The 16-year-old in the village in Africa is important to God as the person sitting in um, D.C. in some kind of office, right? Mm -hmm. Same way. So we have to establish that. As, and I take this more like a business. I, I think a little bit more about business, right? If you want a very good 
return on your inv- investment, mm-hmm. ROI, right? Mm-hmm. You right. are going to invest in something that you know that mm-hmm. is going to bring great returns. Mm-hmm. And we know that the price of a soul is not something that you can quantify. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So what best way to sow? Mm-hmm. You know, the best investment that anybody can do is to sow into the gospel. Mm-hmm. If you can't preach it, mm-hmm. give and send people. When you are given to a mission, you are sending them to go and do that. Mm-hmm. You cannot tell how many oranges are going to come out of one seed. Mm-hmm. That little seed that you sow mm-hmm. into the gospel, mm-hmm. that opportunity that I have to, I had to come here mm-hmm. to receive the gospel, that seed, that one seed, the person, mm-hmm. look at how much harvest mm-hmm. has come out of that. Mm-hmm. So you have no idea the person that you are sowing into or the mission that you are sowing into for them to expand the gospel, they could also be leading other people to Christ who are going to lead others to Christ. Yes. Mm. Without being generous, God would never have sent Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Right. He was a generous God. Yeah. He gave. Yeah. He gave one Jesus. Yeah. Look at how many billions of Christians have yes. come through this, this one Jesus. Yeah. That, that's the mm-hmm. point. So, you know, I'm also supporting what you said, mm-hmm. throwing the invitation to people if you have the opportunity. It is mm-hmm. not about so much about how much you give. Mm-hmm. I say that it is how much is left after you give. Yeah. If you have one million and you give thousand, you haven't done anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is not so much how much you give. Mm-hmm. One is the heart behind it. And two is what is left over after you give. Mm-hmm. You know, That's a good word. don't go and um, just pile up and pile up because these things that we pile up, I'm not saying don't save. Mm-hmm. Right. But, but mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's a fine line between excess mm-hmm. and savings. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and people just want to acquire more and more. It is out of fear mm-hmm. because they yeah. think that one day they're not going to have enough. So I might have to, I have to buy this mm-hmm. and I have to uh, invest in this stock mm-hmm. and I have to. No, please. Mm-hmm. Listen, you people say, oh, yeah, I have to keep that for my kids when they grow up. Listen, mm-hmm. God took care of me. One, my mom. Yeah. My mom was making less than ten dollars a month mm-hmm. and took care of four children. Mm-hmm. And here am I. I've been to some of the best schools in the world. Mm-hmm. She never put a penny anywhere for my college. Mm-hmm. I went to UNC with a full ride, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars scholarship. Right. Yes. And it was God that made that way. Amen. My mom could have said, I will have to save for you. She would her yeah. lifetime, she wouldn't have been able to save that much. Yeah. And I'm not saying don't save for your kids, but right. Mm-hmm. soul yeah. into the gospel. Yeah, be motivated by freedom, not out of fear. Out of fear, that's right. the point, mm-hmm. right? Give towards the gospel yeah. and see soul saved yeah. because somebody shared the that's gospel right. to you for you to be saved. Yeah, And I'm speaking to Christians mm-hmm. here. Yeah. I'm not speaking to unbelievers. Right. Listen, somebody was generous enough mm-hmm. to sow the gospel into somebody who led you to Christ. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. This is a trickle effect yes. that we have. Yeah. Please sow into yeah. the gospel. It is worth it. Yes. When you go to heaven, you will see it. You yes. will see your results. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's a good word. Yes. Thank you. And it just makes me so grateful for our mission partners at Global Hope India yes. that make this podcast possible and that allow us to take the teams over to India and to do the programs that allow us to see more Indian nationals saved and baptized and new church planters being trained and new churches started. And we pray the same over Ghana as well, that the, the, that the Lord Jesus would be lifted high there and that all people would be drawn unto him. Amen. So thank you, David, for sharing. God bless you. Keep up the good work. And we're going to have you back on the podcast. I want to continue to follow this story. Uh, But what a powerful testimony you have given of coming to America, absent to the gospel, and now uh, a a radical (laughs) ambassador for the gospel. Glory to God. Uh, Thank you, brother. Any any final words, anything else you want to share? I mean, close wh- out what show? I want to say is uh, if anybody is listening right now or whoever mm-hmm. will ever have this opportunity to listen to this podcast, mm-hmm. if you have a family member, mm-hmm. if you have a loved one mm-hmm. who is not saved yet, mm-hmm. don't give up. Keep praying for yes. them. Yes. 
-hmm. Keep praying for them because mm -hmm. one day, God, if you keep praying, one day God will make a way. Yeah. Because I know my mom and my sister were praying for me mm -hmm. because they saw the life. Listen, I didn't share the life that I used to live. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You I alluded to it. Oh, man. I, I, I did some stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I did some stuff. I did some stuff. Some bad stuff. Mm -hmm. I used to enjoy sinning. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing in me at a point that made me even think twice about mm -hmm. sinning. Right. I used to thrive in it. Uh huh. Yeah. But I know it was through the prayers of mm -hmm. somebody that I came to Christ. Yeah. You remind me so much of the Apostle Paul. Oh, man. You know, we celebrate Paul's work for the Lord, but we forget about the life of Saul yes. that he used to live. Yes. And the reason Paul was so radical and grateful and generous was because he remembered he used to be a Saul yes. uh, that killed the Christians yes. and and took took a lot of joy in killing the Christians, oh, man. but then radically saved and became one of the greatest church planners in the history of the church. And, and, and that is what I think about, right? And that is part of the reason why I go to the young people mm -hmm. because I realized my life as a young person mm -hmm. that if I had died, yeah. I would have gone to hell. Mm. And the devil made a mistake by not killing me. Uh -huh. And so he's in trouble. I uh -huh. need to go back mm. and tell all these people who are growing up that this is not the way to live. Mm -hmm. The way to live is through Jesus Christ Amen. and there's no other way. Yes. There is no other name given to man under the sun by which anyone can be saved yes. except through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is what we share with everybody, yeah. especially the young people. Yeah. Man, so I look at how zealous I was for the enemy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if I knew Christ, maybe I would have done the same thing because mm -hmm. I, it, it, that, that drive is, is already in me. Mm -hmm. you know. But going back to people who are believing for their family members to come to Christ, mm -hmm. whether it's a husband, whether it's a child, whether it's any family member, keep praying for them. Yes. God, loves us so much that he's going to place somebody in their life that will lead them to Christ. Amen. And that is what happened to me. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Right. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Man, I smoked weed and cigarette for 19 years. Wow. And and I come to Christ. Mm -hmm. You Man, I, I the things that I used to do were crazy. Mm -hmm. But then one day, mm -hmm. through God's own means, mm -hmm. and I tell people now, you can't even pay me a million dollars to take one puff. I won't do it. Uh -huh. It is not out of fear, but it is because the spirit in me does not give me the opportunity to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pray. Keep praying for the loved one. Mm -hmm. I think this message is for somebody who's yeah. going to listen to this sometime. Yeah. Keep praying for them. And one day, yeah. one day, God is going to place somebody or something in their life mm -hmm. that is going to lead to them coming to know Christ. Yeah. We don't want to see anyone go to hell. Mm -hmm. We do not. We do Amen. not want to see anyone. Amen. Because Jesus talked about that. This is in the Bible. He said that I wish, God says, I wish that none of you will perish. Right. Mm -hmm. All would come yes. to repentance. Yes, all would come yeah. to repentance. Yeah, and if we're going to follow him, we've got to have that same urgency yes. in our hearts as well. There Let is. none perish. None. Let none. none perish. Not at all. I just want that word none to just pound in our listeners hearts none today. means zero yes not none, one none yeah. none and what can i do what can i do to join the lord in that that yes. none would perish none would perish yes. yeah um, so i i even believe as right now the holy spirit's bringing the mind into your mind someone that you need to share this podcast with yes. uh, i just want to encourage you to hit the share button send the send the url share it you know, you know who you need to share it with. So yes. sh share this podcast right yeah, now. Share it and Thank share it. So and, I'm, and I'm going to say a prayer. Yeah. And uh, through this podcast. Yeah. As you share it, mm -hmm. that person, whoever. Yeah. Even if it's not to the person that need Christ, mm -hmm. but share it with somebody who is believing Christ for their family member. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that they will be encouraged and not give up. Yeah. It could be a husband. It could be a son. It could yeah. be a daughter. Yeah. It could be a boss. It could be anyone in your life. Mm -hmm. But as, listen, I was a sinner, a sinner down in dirty sin. Mm -hmm. But through the blood of Jesus, he picked me up and yeah. washed me clean with the blood. Yeah. And I stand here to testify that if I can be saved, anyone can be saved. Amen. I was far removed from salvation. Mm -hmm. I was far away from being saved. I would not want to hear anything about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But here I, I stand and I tell you, if God can do that for me, he can do that for you. 
Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Before you end, I will share, I will pray. Yeah, I will set up a prayer. Please. Yeah. Yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Yes. This Lord. podcast, I declare it timeless. Mm -hmm. This podcast, it will be timeless. Mm -hmm. It will know no age and time. It will know no location that yeah. people will get hold of this. Mm -hmm. Father, there is an anointing called the Mismack anointing. That spreads things around. Father, I pray that over this podcast, I pray that people will get hold of this and will share with, with this with other people. And anyone who will ever listen to this that does not know you through the power of the Holy Spirit and your word, oh Lord, you said you'll send forth your word and it will not return to us void. And except you, Lord, call your children, they cannot come. Father, anyone who will listen to this that does not know you, that they will turn their lives over to you. Amen. That they will know that if my story, oh Lord, was the way of sin and now God has brought me to the light, that God can do the same thing for them and it will do the same thing for your family. Whoever is believing God for their family members to know Christ, I stand here in agreement with you. God, the Bible says that when two or more agree on anything, it shall be established. I stand here in agreement with you that that loved one of yours will know Christ. Yes. I don't know how and I don't know when it's going to happen, but as long as you keep praying for them, mm -hmm. God will put something in their way. It will be either a situation or a person Mm. That will lead them to Christ. Yes. Father, we thank you. We seal this with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. David, thank you so much. Oh, man. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. We're going to do this again real soon. Amen. God bless. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're giving away a Starbucks gift card this month to one of our amazing listeners. Go to globalhopeindia.org slash dream and fill out the quick free Starbucks form. We will randomly select a lucky listener. So enter now for your chance to win. This episode is complete, so head over to globalhopeindia.org for show notes and more resources for your success. Continue to find your strategy for reaching your community and changing the world here at Living the Dream.